And now we start with Newton's laws. Newton has three laws. We're going to look at the first law and the third law first because they're actually both quite short and quite easy. But the second law is the one that puts the most effort, well, we're going to have to put the most effort into, so we'll do that separately. So the first thing is you have to learn the definitions, all right? So an object continues in a state of rest or uniform velocity unless it is acted upon by a net or a resultant force. We know what a resultant force is. It means an unbalanced force. If there's an unbalanced force, then we are going to change an object's state of motion. But its state of motion is either it's standing still or it's moving at a constant velocity unless I put an unbalanced force on it. So what does that mean? If an object's got no forces acting on it or if the forces acting are balanced, then the object remains at rest forever. So you can think of the typical book on the table. It's not going anywhere. If an object is moving and no resultant force acts on it, it will continue to move in a straight line forever and ever and ever. And this is the concept of perpetual motion. Motion that goes on forever and ever. It doesn't really exist though, because we all know that we've got this force that stops motion called friction that keeps getting in the way of things. So in the absence of friction, if I gave something a small little push, let's say I had a little stone, and it's over there, and I give it a little force, chung, and then I let it go, it would keep on going forever and ever and ever at a constant velocity. If an object moves at a constant speed, the resultant forces are zero. And this is a big NB. You need to... Because the minute we see something moving, we don't think that there are no unbalanced forces. We think there must be a force causing the movement. The truth is that the movement will continue in the absence of a force. And finally, if the resultant force does act on an object, it will accelerate in the direction of that force. And this is actually Newton's second law. So what is this first law? This first law is almost Newton's law of laziness. Human beings are lazy. They have what's called inertia. And that means that they stay in the same state of motion. So let's take a look at this, bod this car over here. It's got two forces acting on it. It's a stationary car. So it has a downward force of weight and it has an upward force of a normal. Those are balanced and therefore the object remains in a state of stationariness. Here, this vehicle is moving. It is moving with constant velocity. Let's look at the forces. Well, obviously it still has its weight, or its force as a result of gravitation. It has a normal, and obviously somehow or another it got round to going forwards. So something is pushing it forward, let's say we'll call it the applied force, where the engine is going forwards. Something must be holding it back, must be balancing out that applied force, and it's probably a frictional force. So those forces are all balanced. There is no unbalanced force on that object. The normal balances out the weight. The frictional force balances out the applied force. And as a result, there's no net force. The net force, or the resultant force, is zero. That doesn't mean that the object is not moving. It just means it will move with a constant velocity. The concept of laziness in physics is called inertia. It's an object's resistance to any change in their state of motion. The force, we, in order to change something's state of motion, we need to apply a force. And that property of resisting change in motion is inertia. Big mass objects have much greater inertia than small mass objects. So, for example, if you were trying to tackle someone in a sports game, let's take rugby, okay? Here we have a person and he's running in for the tackle. And over here we have a big person. And the big person is going to be much more difficult to stop 
than if you, let's say, had a small person. So the more massive an object is, the greater its inertia. Also, if an object is moving fast, fast objects have got greater inertia than slow objects. All right. The greater the inertia, the more difficult it is to accelerate that object and the harder it is to stop that object or change its motion. Now, where does inertia come in? One of the things I like to ask about is the concept of safety in cars. And we take a look at seat belts. And what does the seat belt do? So if this baby was not strapped in, a car and the baby are moving along together. So the whole system is moving in that direction over there. Suddenly, the brakes are applied. The car stops. What happens to the baby? The baby keeps going forwards and lands up outside of the car. Or any person that does not have a seat belt on. The seat belt acts as the as the force that changes the state of motion. It acts against the motion. Naturally, this baby would fly forwards, but the seat belt acts to stop that motion. So an object will continue in its state of motion unless an unbalanced force, and in this case it's the seat belt, acts against it. Just going to take a look at a little video here. This is your um, FET simulation. So I highly recommend that you go and play with some of these simulations. So it's um, FET. And they are, in this particular simulation, what is going to happen is, uh, first let's look at this, this book. This book is standing still. And until a force gets applied to the book, the book's not going anywhere. So that's its first inertia. If it's stationary, it's not going to move. The next thing I'm going to do is I've removed friction. I mean, obviously this is a simulation, but it is a simulation that you can look at. I've removed friction. So there's no frictional force. I'm going to apply a little force to this book. And then you're going to see that this book just carries on going at exactly the same speed. So now there's the force that's just been applied there. And let's look at this velocity time graph. And we can see that, okay, there's a little force at the beginning which changes the velocity from stationary to moving. And the velocity continues and it does not change after that. So the object stays, in the absence of an unbalanced force, this object stays in its same state of motion, constant velocity.